subscribe our channel press the bell icon for latest videos hi friends here in this video i am going to explain the concept of flitch beams what is meant by a flitch beam so let's get started I'll first draw the diagram of a flitch beam. So here is a flitch beam, an example. Flitch beam is basically a composite beam. That is a beam made up of two different materials. Like here in the example which I am showing, there is wood and steel. So in the red sectioning which I have shown that is a steel and in between there is wood it means the wood has been strengthened with two steel plates on both the sides that is towards the right and left. Steel is having thickness T and depth is D. Wood is having its width as B suffix W that is the width of wood and the depth is same that is small d. Now what happens in case of a beam? Now, beam is a horizontal member having length L supported at A and B just for an example because the supports may be also of different types like it can be supported at one end free at the other as we call it as cantilever beam. Here I am assuming an example of a simply supported beam. Now, under the action of this load this beam is going to bend. And if a single material is used then the resistance offered by the beam would be less. So that is why we are using composite materials because the beam is bending because of some external loading like here there is W and when I take the reaction, reaction at A, reaction at B and considering the center of this beam because of RA I can take either RA or RB this beam is going to bend in this fashion which is called as the sagging bending moment the sagging bending moment so the material of the beam should be such that it should resist this sagging bending moment and opposite to sagging is the hogging bending moment so hogging bending moment would be somewhat like this that is opposite of the sagging bending moment. Sagging bending moment is trying to bend the beam whereas hogging bending moment is trying to offer the moment from the opposite direction that is it will keep the beam straight like for example if this is a beam because of external loading it is bending but the material is such that it will resist that bending and that internal resistance of the material is called as the moment of resistance. So when we are using two different materials having different properties the moment of resistance offered is more because of that the beam would remain straight that is it would oppose the bending. Now once the concept has been understood here one thing we have to remember that in case of flitch beams the strain in both the materials are same that is strain in steel is equal to strain in wood or timber. Strain is denoted by small e. I am adding the suffix s for steel and w for wood. Therefore, now as per Hooke's law, 
stress is directly proportional to strain when i remove the proportionality sign i have a constant which is capital e called as young's modulus so strain is basically stress upon young's modulus so this strain would be replaced with stress in steel upon young's modulus in steel and similarly for wood stress in wood upon young's modulus of wood this e suffix s when it goes on to the other side it becomes e suffix s upon e suffix w into sigma w therefore sigma s would be es by e w is denoted by a ratio m and this ratio is called as the modular ratio here i can say that where m is called as the modular ratio and that modular ratio is given by the young's modulus of the greater value that is when we compare steel with wood steel is going to have more modulus of elasticity because it is an elastic or ductile material whereas wood is brittle so having less value of young's modulus so this modular ratio is greater than 1 next after that i can also say that since the modular ratio is greater than 1 whatever the stress is there in steel that would be greater than that in wood because modular ratio is greater than 1 so this was one of the conclusions from the flesh beam the another conclusion is load shared by steel would be equal to the load shared by wood or timber and load is denoted by p suffix s for steel and wood both would be resisting the load which is equal and load is nothing but stress into area and it is stress into area because since stress is load upon area so load becomes stress into area therefore now the area of steel steel is having here there is two twice of the thickness into d that twice of the thickness can be taken as the total width of the steel so it would be b suffix s the width of steel into the depth of steel that is the total area and in case of wood it would be b suffix w that is the width of wood into the depth of wood and here i have taken bs the total width as twice of thickness now therefore since the depth is same in steel and wood so d would get cancelled out and therefore sigma s upon sigma w is equal to b w upon b s so that is another relation in case of flesh beams that is stress is also inversely proportional to width an element or the material having less width will have more stress whereas the material having greater width will have less stress so these are the conclusions which we can draw from flesh beams and into the further part of the videos we are going to see how to solve the problem related to flesh beams